Hey everybody, Joe from MTX Audio here to talk to you today about subwoofers and specifically voice coils and subwoofer impedance. So what is a voice coil? Well, a voice coil is a magnetic wind. It's an internal part of a subwoofer that connects to the cone as well as to the input terminals on your subwoofer. As you can see here, this is a, a terminal on a sub. As an electrical current is passed from the amplifier into the subwoofer, a magnetic field is generated around this voice coil that field interacts with the magnetic field created by the subwoofer's magnet creating and causing the subwoofer to move according to the sim signal that's coming in from the amplifier in this case a music note what's the best you know dual single four ohm two ohm there's a lot of choices in the world and really the answer is it depends on your amplifier understanding the specifications of your amplifier is key to getting the best performance out of your subwoofer there are some amplifiers that are 2 ohm stable, 1 ohm stable, 4 ohm stable. Knowing that information before you buy a sub is going to save you a lot of headaches uh, on the back end when you go to get your installation set up. So for this example today, we're going to imagine that we have an amplifier that does 250 watts times 1 at 4 ohms, and it does 500 watts times 1 at 2 ohms. So let's take a look, starting with single voice coil subwoofers. Okay, so let's talk about the first type of subwoofer, a single voice coil subwoofer. In this case, we have a single 4 ohm voice coil subwoofer. It's rated at 250 watts RMS power. Now, as we said before, our amplifier is 250 watts at 4 ohms. So how you would connect this guy is simply speaker wire, speaker wire, directly to the terminal cup of your enclosure or directly to your amplifier. What I have here is a multimeter. It's a cheap multimeter you can get at any discount store. And I'm going to verify with you that we're getting a 4 ohm signal. So as you can see, as this guy counts down, we're looking at about four and a half. Now, all right, so what if one sub isn't enough for you and you want to do two? Well, in this instance, we have two 250 watt rated subs. Both are single four ohm. So what does that mean for our amplifier? You may have heard the terms series and parallel wiring. Essentially what that is is a way to connect the speakers in order to get an end result impedance that your amplifier is going to see. Because we have two subs that are 250 watts, we're looking to maximize the power. We know that our amplifier does 500 watts times one at two ohms, so we really want to get two ohms out of this in order to get the, the best performance that we possibly can. So how do we wire in parallel? It's really simple. All we have to do is connect the positives from both speakers together and the negatives from both speakers together and send that signal to our amplifier. So to illustrate that, I'm going to take the positive and the negatives and then back to our multimeter and as we can see we're getting right down into that two and a half two point four ohm range which is going to be ideal for our 500 watt amplifier at two ohms two subwoofers hooked together now if you wanted to do this in series what we could do is take the negative from one sub, run it to the amp. The positive from the other sub, run it to the amp. And then link the positive and negative between the two subs together. Now what that's going to result in is 8 ohm impedance. So when you think about impedance in ohms, as you notice at 4 ohms we did 250 watts, at 2 ohms we did 500. So doing the math backwards, at 8 ohms we'd be doing about 125 watts, which is really not enough to power these two subwoofers. So in this particular case, parallel wiring is the way to go. Okay, so we talked about single voice coil subwoofers. Let's now talk about dual voice coils. Now let me first say, because a subwoofer has two voice coils does not mean it can handle twice the power as a single voice coil. That is a misnomer that unfortunately is, is around in the world. Make sure you understand that that's not true. A thousand watt 9500 single forum sub does the same thousand watts that a dual forum 9500 does. The advantage to a dual voice coil subwoofer is that it gives you some better wiring options, especially in a single sub scenario. So what we have here is a dual 4 ohm T8012. This is rated at 500 watts RMS. Remember, we're talking about an amplifier that does 500 watts times 1 at 2 ohms. So how do we get this dual 4 ohm sub to be maximized with this 500 watt amplifier that we have? As we learned with the single 4 ohm, you put two 4 ohm voice coils together in parallel, you get 2 ohms, which is what we're looking for. 
So simple thing to do here, all the voice coils are on the same sub, so it's a matter of connecting them. Negative to negative, positive to positive, and then let's get out the multimeter to verify. As you can see, we're still in that same just above 2 ohm range. Single subwoofer connected to the 500 watt at 2 ohm amplifier. This is a perfect wiring scenario. So you may say, Joe, what if we wire them in series on accident or that's how we want to do it? Well, again, from that previous example with the single 4 ohms that we have, if you have a dual 4 ohm subwoofer and you wire the voice coils in series, you're going to wind up with 8 ohms. Now, let me, let me illustrate that for you. I'm going to take this apart. And I'm going to take the negative from the first voice coil, connect it to the positive of the other. And then I'm going to connect the negative to the multimeter, which is just like our amplifier in this case, and the positive to the multimeter. And we are going to see somewhere between 7 and 8 ohms depending on the resistance of your wire and how good the connections are from my multimeter. Again, 8 ohms, only going to get you 125 watts in our amplifier example. Not the way to go with this. You really want to wire this up in parallel and, and get that 2 ohm impedance. So we talked about single 4 ohm. We talked about dual 4 ohms. What about dual 2 ohm? Dual 2 ohm is another type of subwoofer that's out there. And I'm going to go ahead and get that wired up, and then we're going to show you the options available for it. OK, so in this example, we're going to talk about a dual 2 ohm voice coil subwoofer. This is again is a T8012, except now we're talking about a dual 2 versus a dual 4. So what does that mean for us? What that means is that we can either get 1 ohm out of this or 4 ohms out of this. This is why it's really important to understand the specifications of your amplifier and what kind of impedance load it can handle. If we wire this to 1 ohm, and we do that by doing it in parallel, where we connect the two positives and the two negatives, and we connect that to our multimeter, see that this is going to result in just over 1 ohm. Now because our amplifier in our example is only 2 ohm stable, connecting a subwoofer in this fashion to that amplifier is going to result in that amplifier going into protect and not getting the performance that you want out of it. So let's say you want to do it in series. As we've probably learned and as you probably can guess, if we connect them in series, and again we're going to connect the positive from one, to the negative of the other. And then we are going to connect the other positive and negative to our multimeter or amplifier. And as you can see, this is going to result in a 4 ohm impedance. Now this subwoofer would perform on our amplifier at 4 ohms, but you'd only be getting 250 watts out of that amplifier, so you wouldn't be maximizing the potential of the sub. Best case scenario for a 500 watt amplifier at 2 ohms, the dual 4 or 2 single 4 ohm subs is going to get you the best performance. This can be applied to any subwoofer that you have. That's why it's always best to get your amplifier first and then match your subs up to it. If you buy subs beforehand, you may not be able to find an amplifier that will work at the impedance that you're looking for. To see more wiring diagrams and to learn more, visit the support page of MTX.com. Ask us any question you like on our Facebook page, and uh, we'll be able to hopefully film some more questions for you guys and get you some more knowledge. I appreciate your time, and have a great day.